Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me on the Slice of Healthcare podcast. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me today is Bill Cap, the co-founder and CEO at Fountain Life. Bill, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you, Jared? I'm doing well. Excited to, to chat with you. Let's dive right in. Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah, so Jared, my background is I'm a, a 30, uh, really, a, I've been in healthcare for over 30 years. I started my career as an orthopedic surgeon with a background in immunogenetics. Uh, and uh, in the process, I became a little bit of an entrepreneur. I built surgery centers and imaging centers, and then subsequently uh, built about nine hospitals. Uh, and in the process, uh, was always looking for healthcare innovations and how do we improve the cost of care? How do we improve the outcomes of healthcare? Uh, and uh, that's how I kind of got started in this whole business. What what led you to to want to start Fountain Life? Um, and and just to let everyone know, like you're you're doing some cool things. This is not the Fountain of Youth, but uh, uh, it, did that have anything, by the way, to, to do with the name? Did you want to incorporate Fountain Life at, because of Fountain of Youth? No, I don't think so initially. But I think um, you know this was an idea that Tony Robbins came up with, who's one of our co-founders. And uh, so to give you an, uh, some background on what we were doing in healthcare. So I was spending a lot of time uh, taking care of patients, uh, developing new treatment algorithms, uh, trying to bring in the latest technology into healthcare. And about uh, four or five years ago at a conference that was sponsored by another co-founder of ours, Peter Diamandis, uh, I was at an exponential medicine conference and it became very clear that the technologies that were intersecting medicine were going to make such an impact on medicine that we needed to rethink everything we were doing about healthcare. And so we, understanding that 200 years ago, the biggest innovations in healthcare were public health measures. You know, we found out that the plague was caused by rats and, you know, flea infested rats. We found out the water su supplies were issues. Uh, we didn't come up with the germ theory of disease until, you know, the latter part of the, you know, 1800s uh, or, or I say early 1800s. And then obviously, you know, the big innovations occurred in healthcare when we discovered antibiotics and vaccines. And we really doubled life expectancy. But in the process, while we doubled life expectancy, we now unveiled the biggest problem that we're facing in healthcare, which is chronic disease. And this is affecting 80% of the population. And by definition, it's not, it's not really symptomatic until it's relatively late stage. So as I was looking at these technologies that were getting ready to in intersect medicine, it became very clear that we needed a paradigm shift in healthcare. So I, I went back and I started a company called Longevity Performance Centers. And the idea was to Number one, not necessarily create the fountain of youth, but to create an on-ramp to the fountain of youth. Because right now, the lowest hanging fruit we have is early disease detection and putting you on a different pathway. So we started the Longevity Performance Centers and, and the process of doing that. Uh, we were approached by Tony Robbins and Peter Diamandis, who had heard what we were doing, and they were very fascinated. They had gotten involved in the stem cell business. And they came over about three years ago uh, to our center in Naples, Florida. And we had an introductory meeting, and the next thing we know, six months later, Fountain Life was born. And that's how we started this uh, this entire uh, endeavor to really change healthcare. And I think the point being, we're not trying to change the sick care model. We're trying to get better at detecting disease before you become symptomatic. And it's a paradigm shift because everything we do in healthcare is based on symptoms. Yeah, I mean, our current healthcare model is always focused on treating you after you're already sick, right? Versus preventing you from getting sick. And I, I think over the last couple of years, the conversation has shifted more and more towards what you were talking about, right? This preventative care and uh, helping people get in a better position so they don't get sick, so they can live longer. Um, talk us through this, this emphasis to a more preventative model that Fountain Life has you know, really implemented from day one? And I guess, how has that evolved, uh, you know, since the company launch? Yeah, so I think it's a, it's a great question, because as we continue to see technologies that continue to intersect the healthcare space, our initial model, it continues to evolve over time. So I would tell you, you know, we're really not a, a research company, we're more of a data company, meaning that we're collecting data on asymptomatic individuals, and we're detecting disease at its earliest stages. And so what became very apparent after we had scanned about and, and put about a 1000 people through our process, is that it turns out that two, even though everyone came to us thinking they were healthy, and I think we're all optimists about our health, we all think we're sick until we're not. The reality is the human body is really good at masking symptoms. We're, it's very good at masking. I mean, people don't just get diabetes. You know, people say, oh, I, got, I, I just got diagnosed with diabetes. No, you were actually diabetic for 15 years prior to then. You know, it was just a milder stage. 
or when people say, you know, I just got cancer. No, you didn't just get cancer. You had it percolating in your body for a really, really long period of time. Same thing with heart disease and all heart disease and everything else that we deal with on a chronic basis. So I think what what became very clear was when we looked at our first thousand clients that it turns out that two percent had cancer, two and a half percent had aneurysms, fourteen percent had elevated liver fat, uh, about fourteen percent had elevated liver iron. You know, fully fifty percent were pre-diabetic, and the list goes on and on. And the point being. Uh, about 17%, by the way, have uh, coronary disease, right? Unde unde undiagnosed coronary disease. And the point is, what we looked at when we looked at the data and then we looked at what was going on inside of healthcare, we realized that 70% of people who have a heart attack will never have a symptom prior to having a heart attack. And yet the healthcare system focuses on the 30% that do have symptoms. Same thing with cancer. 70% of people who die from cancer, die from a cancer we don't even have a screening test for. So as we move to this preventative model, we can't use the old tools that we used to use, which is a physical exam that was invented 200 years ago with a stethoscope that was invented in 1817. That's not going to get it. We have to have more technology, better technology. And the good news is that technology is here today. But the problem is we have misaligned incentives in the, in the system. The sicker you are, the more money the doctor makes. The sicker you are, the more money the hospital makes. And the sicker you are, the more the insurance company makes. So the reality is... We spend 3% of our healthcare dollar on prevention. We spend 97% on break fix. And so the problem, once again, if the airline industry did what the health industry did, we would all be in arms. But because everybody in the healthcare system accepts the fact that you have to wait to become symptomatic before we start to diagnose you, because that's our reference point, because that's what we train people in medical school to do. We train doctors to learn symptoms. That's why when you go to see your doctor and you have this exchange with your doctor, 80% of your diagnosis comes from that interchange, that question and answer system session with the doctor, which means you got to ask the right questions or he's got to, he or she's got to ask the right questions. You got to give the right answers. So the problem with that is that it's still based on symptoms. So if we're going to make the next paradigm shift and attack the 80% of people with chronic disease, we have to, just like the airline industry, we have to start to diagnose problems before they become catastrophic. And this is where the healthcare system is failing right now. And this is where Fountain Life's mission is. And that's why in order to do this, our testing is very is expensive right now. Uh, and we, what our goal is, is democratize this and make it available for everybody. And that's how we're gonna do that, starting with an insurance company that we just launched. And, and what technologies are included in these screenings that members end up going through? Right. So we uh, use a lot of the technologies that have been around for a while, but we use a lot of advanced AI overlays. Uh, so, for instance, you can see where AI is entering the imaging. So we do a full body and brain MRI, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and then it has an overlay with artificial intelligence to read those to assist the radiologist uh, and your doctor. Uh, in addition to that, we do a very advanced coronary uh, uh, CAT scan of your heart. But instead of just doing the CT, it's called a CCTA. It's a coronary CT angiography. Put a little dye in your vein. Take a quick snapshot of your of your heart with an X-ray machine, uh, really with a CT scan. And then at the same time, we then read that with artificial intelligence. So we can tell you exactly how much plaque you have in your arteries, and then show you a path to reverse that. Same thing with dementia. We can show you any changes in your brain uh, that are might be uh, consistent with early stage dementia, or early stage memory loss. And we can show you how to start to reverse the early stage. The same thing when we do your whole body and brain MR, uh, we also then look at your genomics. So we also look at your microbiome, all the bacteria in your gut to see what how they're contributing or not contributing to your health. And then more importantly, we also look at your DEXA scan. We do advanced biomarkers to determine your physiologic age, uh, meaning your DNA methylation patterns. And we do a whole variety of other tests uh, to not only determine what is wrong that we can help you correct. And that's in about 40% of people have something that needs to be addressed. But more importantly, how do we optimize your performance? And that's the other side of the equation. And how quickly can members get the results from these screenings that they go through with you? Yeah. So most of the time, uh, you know, w either that day will give you a very clear picture of anything that's going on in, with your heart. As far as anything on the, the body scans, that's usually within 24 to 48 hours. And then you get a very comprehensive executive report that actually will give you all the all the findings that in your body. And then at the same time, you know what the corrective measures we would recommend. And that usually comes at about six weeks once we're able to compile all of the genetic information and all of the other data that we collect. And Bill, my last thing, my last two things for you that I, I want to dive into quick is what's next for the company and then what's your long-term vision for the company? 
Right. So I, we always joke that, you know, none of us really needed this job when we started it. We have a passion for the for the field. But I think the, the long term vision for the company is to change the discussion around healthcare because, quite frankly, the discussion with misaligned incentives is still focused on the end diagnostic result, not preventing things at their earliest stages. And we know that just from our data, if we can collect and, and detect these things early, we can reverse and uh, not only reverse the processes, but really what we found is that we can lower healthcare costs by up to 76% for the US population. So we're not talking about um, adding costs to the system. What we're talking about is repurposing the dollars that are currently being spent to reverse the, the spend process in the US. And then I would tell you the vision for Fountain right now, we have four centers. We have been approached by mixed use developments that wanna embed Fountain Life in those centers. But ultimately our goal is to get to a digital platform and that's what we're in the process of doing and using some of these new generative AIs to give you essentially uh, a snapshot of your health. And if you would, if you uh, permit me, it's like, like having Jarvis for your own health, right? Where all your wearables get incorporated, all your baseline data. And then at the same time, you get a actionable intelligence on a day-to-day -day basis to improve your health uh, and overall outcomes. So the point here is, um, you know, the uh, generative AI will make a massive difference, but once again, we have to train the AI in asymptomatic care because we really don't have an AI that's been trained on that platform. So that's our goal. And then really it's to, to change the discussion. And once again, I go back to, if we don't change the discussion, we'll be rationing healthcare across the, the board and we have to optimize people's health. And we believe that really nursing homes and assisted living isn't the way to go. We believe we can optimize your health. So your health span uh, matches your lifespan, whatever your lifespan is, you can match those two together. Well, I'm, I'm super interested in, to continue on my own, learning more about what you're doing and continue creating a different type of healthcare for us. We need it. Uh, really appreciate you coming on the show, Bill, and telling us more about your vision and, and what Fountain Life is doing today. And hopefully we can have you come on again real soon. And uh, I can't wait until I start seeing uh, more locations around my, my area on the, uh, uh, I'm in, I'm right near Tampa, Tampa area. Um, so we have, a, we have Orlando and Naples. So, uh, either one of those, uh, good opportunities. Okay. Not too far, not too far at all. Um, but Bill really, really excited that we were able to have you on the show. Can't wait to continue the conversation and best of luck to you and your team. Great. Thank you very much, Jared.